verse 17, Jesus says, a rich young man, you know the story? A rich young man, he comes to Jesus. He says to him, good teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Jesus says to him, why do you call me good? There is no one good except God alone. So even it seems to me from the Bible that even Jesus is saying that God is the only true God and he is his representative, one who represents God. That's the Islamic belief. In Islam, we believe God is one. He sends prophets like Jesus, Abraham, Muhammad, upon whom be peace. All of them, we, we give this title of respect. Yeah. And that's the essence. But God is never a man. What are your views on that? What do you believe? What do you think about that, first of all? I, I don't really know. I believe what God is one in every religion. I can't say anything about them all. Like, yeah. some, some about the Catholic Christian, and this one, you read more about it what was in the past. Yes. Yeah, like in Orthodox uh, religion, what I was reading before, like, before every married woman, Orthodox, she will cover her head, same like this. Yeah. But some people disagree, but I read all through what it was like past 100 years ago. Yeah, woman and before, when she married the man, she covered her head. Because, like, it's only for the view of the husband. He should see the beauty and everything. So it was before, even in Catholic Christianity. But, like, I understand like a lot of people like they have their own choice whatever See that's actually in 1 Corinthians I think it's chapter 6 uh, where Jesus uh, where it said rather Paul says that a woman who does not cover her head she dishonors herself yeah, it, was. it was like that but what happened over the last hundred years with the advent of liberalism in the West slowly took everything away and they sexualized the woman you see yeah. before like the, like the Christian women did you know, even in this country, if a woman was to travel from one place to the other, she would cover herself fully, like the Muslim women wear the niqab. Yeah. Up to 100 years ago in this country, where we're standing today, 100, 120 years ago, that was a normal. But things happened as a result of certain influences, which have made societies more liberal. And hence, you know, we've, we've, we've actually gone away from God. But what I mean, what I, what I would like to say to you in effect is that Islam teaches we have believed that Islam has got the best concept of God. One supreme being, he's not a man, he's not a woman, not an idol, not a statue. And people like Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon them, were messengers of God. They wanted people to worship God correctly. That's the fundamental message of Islam. And I mean, is that something which you, does that resonate with you? Do you, do you find that appealing? In Catholic, as well, we have four days fast before Christmas. Yes. I think it's why people go to church and listen to the Bible or like Easter, something like that. In my, in my Orthodox Christianity, we're supposed to follow the worship. Like every Wednesday and Friday, we're supposed to fast. Wednesday and Friday. Interesting. We're supposed to fast Monday and Thursday. Even out of Ramadan. Yeah. Out of Ramadan, we're supposed to fast those things. Yeah, Wednesday and Friday, okay. even if it's not Easter, even if it's not uh, like Christmas or something like that. But, no, it's everything, it's changed. It's changed. It's but you know in the Quran, it actually teaches that the in chapter 5 verse 82, it says that the Christians are the nearest to the Muslims in love. Because amongst them, there are priests and monks and they are not arrogant people. So the Quran, it speaks favorably about Catholic people. And it also is very interesting, you know, in one of the Catholic encyclopedias, like the commentaries to the Catholic Bible, it's known as the New Jerome Biblical Catholic Commentary. I'm not sure if you've heard of it before. New Jerome Catholic Biblical Commentary. On page, I think it's 642, it says that when the origin about Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, when the original message of the disciples of Jesus got lost in history, and the understanding of Paul became prevalent. When Islam came 600 years later, it brought back the actual true message of the oneness of God. That's in your own commentaries of the Catholic Bible. I'll repeat that again. 
It's called the New Jerome Biblical Commentary. So basically in the Quran it speaks very favorably about Christians. Muslims are allowed to marry Christians because they are known as people of the book. Revelation was given to them, New Testament. The Jews, they had the Old Testament. So by this very nature, there's a commonality between the Abrahamic faiths. The Quran claims to be the final testament to mankind, the final revelation given by the one true God to all of mankind. It's a universal faith for everyone. So for example, the New Testament, it was only specifically for the Jewish people. Jesus says in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the New Testament, I have only come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He only came for a specific people. Islam comes for the whole, all of mankind. The Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace, is sent as a mercy to all of mankind, bringing you back to worshipping God alone. The Prophet Muhammad, is, upon whom be peace, is just a messenger. No more, no less. Just like Jesus, just like Moses, just like Abraham. They came to their communities who had transgressed from worshipping God and they encouraged to, them to worship God and not to make man as God. Does that make sense? That's Islam in a nutshell. So for us, Jesus is a great and mighty prophet, great and mighty messenger, the Messiah who came as a, I mean, as in, born to a virgin birth. Did you know there's a whole chapter in the Quran devoted to Mary? It's called Surah Maryam. Whole chapter about her. She is, in Islamic understanding, she is the greatest woman who ever lived. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All religions teach good. Okay. What we understand is we have to understand who our creator is, what he is and what he is not. So again, he's not a man. He's not a woman. He's not an idol. He's not a statue. He's not. He's unlike his creation. He's created everything but he's beyond the creation. So in the Quran, it says the following. It says, say he is Allah the one, the eternally besought of all, meaning everybody needs him. He begetteth not, meaning he doesn't give birth to anyone or neither is he begotten, meaning he never came into existence. And there is nothing like unto God. Does that make sense? So what I'd invite you to do is to investigate Islam further, if you want to. I can offer you a free copy of the Quran in English if you would like one. I can give you some excellent information there. So let me just go to the table and offer you some stuff. Um, your, sorry, sorry. So this is a Quran, it's inside um, the bag. There's some useful in there. I really enjoyed speaking to you. Oh, Valeria, mine's Mustafa. We're here regularly. If you do want to come by in the future, please do so. Thank okay, you. thank you so thank much. You so Take care. Bye bye now. Bye.